The goal of this video is to explain the VG diagram in a simple way that makes the VG diagram easy to look at. And this is the VG diagram that we'll be learning how to interpret. Before this gets really confusing and intimidating, let's take this off the screen. And let's begin by creating our, our own VG diagram from scratch. A VG diagram compares velocity against load factors, or Gs. Therefore you get V and G, the VG diagram. The first thing we'll put into this VG diagram is the minimum stall speed. And this airplane stalls at 40 knots. Next we'll load up the airplane beyond 1G and find out the airspeed at which it stalls. These are known as accelerated stalls and the equation for this, even though you don't have to memorize it, is the square root of the load factor multiplied by the minimum stall speed. So we'll take the square root of 1 multiplied by 40, square root of 2 and multiply that by 40, and so on uh, with the load factor of 3, 4, and 5 also. So the square root of 1 multiplied by 40 is 40. So we have our first dot there. The square root of 2 multiplied by 40 is 57. So we have that dot there. Square root of 3 by 40 is 69. And so on. And we have this nice curve. We can also do that for the negative g's, although this is a different curve than the one up on top. You don't need to memorize how to get this, but if you understand that as load factor increases, the stall speed increases. That's all you need to know. Next we'll insert the maximum airspeed restrictions. And this example, Cessna 172, has a VNO speed of 140 knots of calibrated airspeed. And this is the maximum structural operating speed. Also we have the VNE, the never exceed speed at 160 knots of calibrated airspeed. In yellow we have the range in which we can get structural damage and in the red we have structural failure. Next we'll analyze the aircraft category limitations and this 172 we're flying within the normal category which is designed to absorb 3.8 G's of positive load and negative 1.52 G's of load. So that's about right here. So we'll draw a line across here and negative 1.52 right about here. Something else I'll point out is that at the intersection between the category limitation of 3.8 and our accelerated stall speed is where we get our maneuvering speed. And there will be another video explaining VA speed more in depth but it's this airspeed that we want to understand because in certain situations we want the airplane to stall before there is structural damage done to the airplane. The thing to keep in mind about the VG diagram is that it's only valid for an airplane at a certain weight and at a certain altitude. If either the weight or the altitude changes, the VG diagram will change. For example, if we increase our weight, we already know that our stall speed will increase, so we can draw that here. Our accelerated stall speed curve will be very similar, positive and negative. And again, going back to VA speed, with an increase in weight, our VA speed increases as well. So let's come back to the VG diagram. Here we have our minimum stall speed. Here we have our accelerated stall speed our maneuvering speed at the intersection between the category limitation, positive, and also at our negative. This example airplane is flying at a different category because this has a positive 4.4 limitation and a negative 1. Point, I don't know, something like 8. We have our VNE speed, our never exceed speed. We have our VNO speed. So even though there are a few things that are different about this graph than the one that we drew, the idea is still the same. I hope this has gone a long way in demystifying the VG diagram, and when you look at one, you know what to look for.